to a God who are seeking for something higher than themselves, oh God. Father, we bless you today, oh God. We say have your way, oh God. We glorify you today, oh God. We lift up your name today and pray for oh God. And we declare your wonder works, oh God. Father, we thank you that you are a good God. Father, we thank you that you're merciful, oh God. Father, we bless you, Lord, because you are faithful, even when we are not faithful to you, oh God. Father, we decrease today, oh God, that you might increase, oh God, increasing your power, increasing your anointing, increasing your presence, oh God. Father, we lift up those in the community, oh God, who do not know you, oh God. Father, you said that no man coming unless you draw them, oh God. And so, Father, we pray that you would draw them, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, oh God. Father, we bless you today, oh God, for you come to seek that which was lost, oh God. And Father, we thank you, Lord, oh God, that you have brought us into your fold, oh God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that the sound that would be echoed out, in, oh God, into the atmosphere, oh God, that it would touch those, oh God, who are in need of something new, who are seeking for change in their lives, oh God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that healing will flow, oh God, down West 25th, down Clark, down Scranton, oh God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for those who are battling in grief, oh God. Father, we pray that you would be the comforter, oh God. Father, you said that you go to prepare a place, oh God, but you would not leave us comfortless, oh God. That you would send the comforter, oh God, to comfort us. So, Father, we lift up the Holy Spirit in this place, oh God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, oh God. That he would move, oh God, only how he knows how to move, oh God. That he would bring clarity, oh God. That he would bring comfort, oh God. That he would bring peace, oh God. We speak into the atmosphere, oh God. And we bind up all witchcraft in the name of Jesus. We bind up all malice in the name of Jesus. We bind up hurt and envy, oh God, and strife, oh God. And we release your love. We release your peace. We release your comfort in the atmosphere, oh God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for those who have walked away because they've been hurt, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would even begin, oh God, to uproot, oh God, that bitterness and the hurt, oh God, and the pain, oh God. And that you would lavish them with your spirit, oh God. That you would pour in the oil and the wine, oh God. That you would bring comfort and healing, oh God. Father, we pray for our pastors today, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that is on their lives. We thank you for the word, oh God, that has empowered them, oh God, to do what you have called them to do, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus for our leadership, oh God, that they will continue, oh God, to lift up our pastors, oh God. That you would give them with wisdom and knowledge and understanding, oh God. Father, we will be a heart of people who have a heart of compassion, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus for the voice of today, oh God. The rhythmic sounds, oh God. We pray that they will play with clarity, oh God. That they will play with power, oh God. That they will be skillful in the craft, oh God, which you have blessed them with. Bless the works of their hands, oh God. Every key, oh God, that is strong, oh God. Father, that it will destroy the very works of the enemy, oh God. Every voice, oh God, that it will be lifted up as a trumpet, oh God. And that it will break down every stronghold and every principality and everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of Jesus. Christ. We pray for those who do not know you today, oh God. We pray that in the name of Jesus, oh God, that there will be a fresh fire and anointing, oh God, on yes, the yes, that yes, has been yes, today, oh yes, God. Lord. Trouble the waters in our oh God, that you will be glorified and magnified, and we will give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, can you just magnify your Savior?
your circumstances. He is exalted. Above your trials, He is exalted. Above every diagnosis, He is exalted. Above your grief, He is exalted. Can you lift your hands and begin to exalt yourself?
still can give whatever the Lord puts on your heart. We are a blessed people. We are a blessed people. Amen. And we are blessed. And we're going to ask the Lord to continue to increase. We're going to give you a little time to prepare your envelopes. It's a little different for us today. But we're going to make time for you to give whatever the Lord puts on your heart. doesn't matter how big or small it is. The Bible says, so, and you shall reap. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down. Shake it again. Good measure. Shall men. We're looking for the Lord to open some doors for us, some opportunities. Looking for the Lord to give us favor. You believe the Lord has given you favor? Amen. We look for favor every day. And we put it on the hearts of men to favor us. Change the hearts of men to bless your people. We're looking for faith. Are we ready? Amen. Can you pass the buckets? We're passing the buckets. We're passing. Nobody want to move. <laughs> but we'll come to you. We'll come get it. So we're, we're, we're coming to you, passing those brothers, bringing them around. Because you guys look real comfy out there. And just make sure you stay comfortable for the word, though. Because it's going to come in power and authority. So we're going to anticipate what the Lord is going to do today. Since he moved out the rain, no, we had some serious rain yesterday. Look at today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord moved it on out. We needed it, but he moved it on out so we can have this service out here. Amen. Amen. This is favor. We normally don't get favored like this because there were a lot of uh, events, I guess, and stuff that were scheduled yesterday. They got rained out, but the Lord favored us. On today, it's sunny out. It's about to be booming out here in a minute. Now, those of you who had those little fancy chairs out there, praise the Lord. But we want to be a little baking up here, and swatting the bees and all that, but it's all good. Because they was out here first, we kind of invaded their territory a little bit. But it's all right anyhow. Amen. We're still here in the back there. Still giving, still passing them around. We don't want to miss anyone, so make sure. I don't know if you guys, amen, over in that corner over there. Bless the Lord, amen. I don't know if we're streaming, are we streaming? No, I'm streaming today, amen. So if you need a fan, we got those two. The ushers, we'll pass out the fans too. Sunblock. And I hope you might have put some, some sunblock on or something. You know, we tan too now. Hello. Amen. But it's all good. We need some vitamin D. Amen. Takes away some germs and whatnot. So we welcome the vitamin D today. Amen. We Lord. The vitamin D. Amen. Well, let's pray, Father. We thank you. We honor you today. We bless you, Lord, for what you're doing in the midst of us. Yes, Even as we're out here in the open air, we pray that you will rain down on us spiritually and bless what we have given. Cause it to grow, increase upon increase upon increase for those that give. We look for what you're going to do on this week. Bless us indeed. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He made a way. If it had not been for the Lord, I don't even know where I would be today. But I thank God for his mercy. I thank God for his grace. And that our mercies are new every morning. We don't have to live on stale, used yesterday mercies. They're brand new every morning. Welcome all. Hallelujah. Do we have any first, second, or third time visitors? If you do, please stand so that we can recognize you and thank God for you. Hallelujah. Glory. You can be anywhere else on this wonderful, beautiful day. But God let the sun shine down on us so that you can come out here and worship with us in our back to school band. Let's give them a great big mega welcome. Good morning, Mega Church. Let's hear you this morning. We didn't come outside for nothing. Let's make some noise for Jesus on this morning. We didn't come outside to be quiet. Let's let them know that we're here. We do have one special announcement uh, from Dean Holt. So she is going to come up at this time, and then we're going to hear our third scripture. Good morning, Mega Church. Uh, Good morning. And then to the sunshine, of course, uh, the paper. So I just wanted to talk about the Mega School of Theology. Uh, we have online uh, registration for those of you that express interest. I have these with a QR code. So all you have to do is go online, click uh, uh, photograph the color course, go online and fill in your information. So we'd like to get a count. We're starting on August 30th and it will tell you the classes. So just see me after church if you like this. It will be on the screen next week when we're back in the sanctuary, so you'll be able to use your cameras in the church. Thank you. Morning, Mega Church. Morning. Morning. Yes, uh, My understanding for our theme and scripture for today. Of course, our theme is the power, power to, to become. become. I'm going to say it one more time. The theme is the power, power to, to become. become. It comes from John chapter 1, verse 12. Now, if you have your phones and look at the Bible, please go ahead and look that up. You remember it, go ahead and recite with me. Otherwise, just kind of sit, listen, take it all in. But as many as received, received him, him, then, then gave he gave me power, power to become, to become the, the sons of God, of God. Even, even to them that believe in his, his name. name. Which were to born not of blood, blood, nor of the will of flesh, 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 nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. Amen. And now we have coming our illustrious senior pastor, yes. Pastor Louis Henry! Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I don't know if it's because I was sitting all the way over on this side, but I'm not hearing y'all. I don't need you to be afraid or ashamed to make some noise for Jesus. Can I get another church to lift up the name of Jesus? Come on, just give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Not yes, Lord. Shout unto God yes, Lord. with the voice of triumph. Woo. For he Hallelujah. Is yes, yes. Mercy yes. Into us forever. Yes. One yes. more time, let me hear you shout. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know sometimes we get a little uncomfortable when we're outside, but this is where your relationship really matters. See, I don't need to be in the four walls to declare of how good Jesus is and to let people see that I'm a believer. Do I have any other believers out here in the parking lot? Anybody in the neighborhood Hallelujah. here to declare that Jesus is Lord? Can you just shout that? Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Jesus yes. is Lord. Amen. Amen. I know it's hot out here. It's getting hot out here. So we're not going to be before you too long so you can get some snow cones and hot cones and all that kind of wonderful things. Um, we're going to actually go to our theme scripture, a few verses before that, I want to read 
to your hearing, John chapter 1, starting at verse 1, and we'll go through our theme as well. I'm going to read it in the King James. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, that that was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But, everyone say but. But. As many as received him. To them gave he power, say power, power, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would come even into this atmosphere. We know we're not in the four walls, so God, you have free reign and access, not just to this parking lot, God, but every building, every house, every place around us. We declare in the name of Jesus that your word shall be released and it shall accomplish what it's been sent to do. God, we pray that the anointing power in your word will even set prisoners free, oh God, that it will set the captives free in their mind, in their heart, that there will be mental health issues that are regulated right now in the name of Jesus. God, we declare that freedom shall come to this community and prosperity in the name of Jesus. We come against every assignment of the enemy. We command you to cease and desist. You have no power. You have no authority. We proclaim that Jesus is Lord of Stratton Road. Jesus is Lord of Brame Avenue. Jesus is Lord of Clark Avenue. Jesus is Lord of West 25th. Jesus is Lord of Metro Hospital. Jesus is Lord of Esperanza. God, we declare it in the name of Jesus that this very community shall shift in Jesus' name because we declare the name of Jesus and there is no name greater than the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the sound of your name. They must flee at the sound of at the mention of your name. Lives are turned and changed for the good. We declare all these things in the name of Jesus. Everyone who believes it, shout amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. Glory to God, you might be seated in his presence. We thank God for every single one of you. I want to, before we um, go too far into the message and disperse and do all of our fun things. I want to thank all of the volunteers that came early this morning to help set up those that are working and going to be working. We want to say thank you. All of our visitors, all our visitors, can you just wave your hand? If you're a visitor this morning, wave your hand. So honored to have you. First lady, I didn't know if I was supposed to call you pastor or first lady, but I'm glad she said first lady. Body of Christ in North Carolina. North Carolina, all the way from North Carolina. She is the sister of uh, Minister Connie and Elder Gerald and uh, Minister uh, Angela Clark. So, I mean, Manny. Uh, Manny. The Clark's Manny. Go so back and forth. Um, so we thank God for you being here. All of you who are here this morning, um, it's still morning. It's still morning. We're going to make sure that we have the opportunity to do all that we desire, but how many people know it doesn't matter what we desire, what matters is what God desires. Whatever he wants to accomplish, we are open and willing to let him do that. I know we started a lot late than what we planned, or our normal nine o'clock service, we pushed it back um, just to honor 
uh, our surrounding neighbors. We didn't want to wake them up too early, so we thank you all for your patience in that regard. I want to share this morning probably on something um, that any of you could, any of you who have a relationship, how many, how many saved, sanctified believers do we have out there? Amen. Any of you could, but, um, and I'm probably going to date myself just a little bit. I grew up um, when my grandmother would watch me during the summertime, she always had the TV channel on, and I grew up watching The Price is Right. Anybody ever watch The Price is Right? The only close to 50 or over 50. <laughs> but there was a, 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 an announcer, I think his name was Johnny Goodson, I think that was his name, that he always would announce Bob Barker. And this morning, my, my title of my message, I want to uh, project my Johnny Goodson voice and tell you who or what the topic of my message is. Is that okay? Can y'all roll with me? I didn't have time to get the band to play behind me on this, but I want to, to share on the topic. He We read John chapter one, verse one, starts off by saying, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the part that I want you to pay close attention to is the last part of that verse that says, and the word was God. Yeah. Helps us to understand that Jesus is the word. And if you understand about the word, and the power of the word. One of the things that I want you to hear in, in your earshot this morning is that the word has the power to create. Genesis chapter one, verse one says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and the darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, and God God said, what did God say? Let there be light, and there was light. So the word has the power to create. If we keep going on um, and we look at verse uh, 20, it says, and God said, let the waters, and God said, let the waters, and God said. God said. Are you with me? Yes. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature, that, uh, that hath life, and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created, everyone say created, yes. great wells and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. This is the understanding that when God releases a word, when he releases his word, it has the ability to create. I need you to understand and hear me this morning that because Jesus is the word, whenever you release Jesus, he has the ability to create life. See, a lot of us are dealing with dead situations because we refuse to put Jesus in the middle of it. We would rather work it out ourselves or figure it out based upon man's laws and man's understanding and man's diagnosis and man's health, health plans and health treatments instead of just putting Jesus, the word, in your situation that seems to be dead. Matthew 8 and 8 gives me a wonderful understanding of how the word that Jesus releases has the ability to bring life. It says the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak. Speak the word only. Ah, see, I, 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 this is where, this is where uh, those of you who claim to be ministers of the gospel, those of you preachers, understand even the centurion recognized the power of the word, but he said, you don't have to say anything else but the word. The word only speak. If you would just speak the word only, we have to recognize that this man, he could have, listen, in that day, it was, it was an honor to have someone like Jesus come to your home. Yes. Amen? Yes. It should be an honor yes. to have someone like Jesus come to your home now. Yes. But he said, listen, I'm not even worthy 
I'm not even worthy that you even enter into my house. So all I need you to do is speak a word. But speak the word only. I don't, I don't need fluff. I don't need fancy conversation. I don't need all the rhetoric. I don't need the stuff that makes it seem like it's power. I just need you to speak the word because I recognize that there's power in your word to bring life. Now, I guess I'm preaching to myself. Let, let me speak to all my creatives out there. I was preparing this message and the Lord dropped this in my spirit. Oh, how many creatives do we have? You're, you write songs, poems, you're an artist or whatever it might be. All of my creatives, let me help you. Give, let me give you the key to making sure that your creativity is what it's supposed to be. Whatever it is that you're doing to create, put the word in it. Put the word in it. You cannot go wrong when you put the word in. If you're, if you're painting, make sure you're painting something about the word. If you're writing a song, make sure your song has the word in it. We, there was, there was a, 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 a sermon that Bishop Blackwell preached years ago, Burn Baby Burn. And in that message, he made the statement that there was, there's an artist that is extremely popular and um, has worldwide fame. And he, he did a little research and come to find out that this artist, this singer-songwriter, when he would write his songs, he would take them to the warlocks and the witches and have them pray over his songs. And many of you are listening to his songs all the time and you don't understand that the draw is because there's a spirit that was put in that song. What am I saying? What I'm saying to you is, just like the enemy can put a spirit in a song, you can put the word in a song that draws all men, that brings life. The reason people listen to music over and over again is why? Because it creates an emotion. Do you understand that when you put the word in your work, I don't care if you're a, a, a banker, you're an accountant, you're a, a, a doctor, a lawyer, a trash man, if you put the word, this is why every morning when I go into my office, I look up a, the scripture of the day and I, I declare it. I put the word in my, in my office. All right, y'all quiet, it's all right. The scripture goes on to let us know that he is, in verse five, it says, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There's a, a, a principle that I want you to understand about darkness uh, and light. Anybody grow up scared of the dark? Yes, sir. Anybody still old and scared of the dark? <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me speak to you just for a second. I wonder if you can follow me with this. I wonder if you can recognize that darkness covers light. Darkness covers light. Think about earlier today. We had the sun and then the clouds came and it got dark. The light didn't go anywhere. The darkness just covered it so we couldn't see. However, light dissipates darkness. Light destroys darkness. In other words, go into a dark room. Bring light. Where's the darkness? It's gone. You've got to understand the power of light. See, if you understand the power of light, then you understand the power of Jesus. That whenever there's a dark situation, all you need to do is bring the light in it, and you don't have to worry about the darkness because darkness has to flee when the light is put in. Yes, yes. And somebody might say, but what about a shadow? Understand something about a shadow. A shadow has no power. It actually doesn't. It still has light in it. You can see through a shadow. Yes, yes. David understood that. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not really death. It's just a shadow. It's something that's trying to keep me from seeing what's really there, but I look and I can still see the light through the shadow. Uh, I'm only going to get excited. I ain't got time. When we understand true light, true light brings revelation. 
See, uh, 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 when there's a, a situation that you don't understand, when there's a, a circumstance that you have no answer for, we, we sing the song and we declare that Jesus is the answer for the world today, but we're afraid to put Jesus in the world. Some of us came to outdoor service hoping no, none of our coworkers see me out here praising God. And if they do, I'm just going to, I'm going to be relaxed. Let me help you understand something. That if we truly understood the power of Jesus, we shouldn't have been able to control your praise out here. Because you have such a freedom when you're out here to praise God. I, 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 we, we run around the sanctuary, but we won't run around the parking lot. But here, here let, let, me, let me stick to what I'm supposed to be talking about. That, that true light brings revelation. That any time Jesus stepped on a scene, think about any time when Jesus had to come into the scene where there was confusion, where there was sickness, where there was disease. When Jesus came in, he always declared the word. The word would declare the word. So that there would be light or revelation. Let me let me give you an even better understanding of this. A lot of times we think that we we have to have the answer. That's not the totality of revelation. Revelation is to bring light and to enlighten or bring understanding. Sometimes. When you're faced with a situation by your neighbor or you're faced with a situation by a stranger, you don't have to have the answer to their situation. All you need to do is bring revelation. Come with me. I'm getting it. Come with me. That I don't necessarily have to tell you how you're going to find a job. But the revelation that I can bring is that in the midst of you not having, God can still keep you. And God can give you direction. And God can open a door that no man can shut. That brings revelation to your situation. There are sometimes you just need to help people understand why they're going through what they're going through. You're going through this because the enemy is mad because you decided last week you were giving your heart to Jesus. How many times do we allow sinners to come and be saved and we don't give them revelation of what's going on in their lives on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? See, it's easy for me to tell you to lift your hands and spit and all that. But it's not easy to help people understand why they're going through the valley of the shadow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's all right. Let me move on. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. When you receive him, how many people have received him? Yes. Amen. How many people are not ashamed to declare that I've received him? When you receive him and he gives you the power to become, when you receive him in your heart and you allow him to sit on the throne of your heart, he begins to regulate your emotions. He helps you to understand and have true godly desires. He helps you to make choices that are beneficial to your call and your purpose. What we speak comes out of our hearts. So understand when you receive him in your heart, you can only speak the word. So just receive him in your heart. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me move on. If you receive him in our communities, if our communities would receive Jesus Christ, then there would be peace in our streets. There would be freedom from addiction and oppression. If our communities would receive him, then we, he would give them hope. And when all hope seems to be gone for our community, he would cause our community to live and not die. If we receive him in our schools, every child would have a chance to learn without being bullied and without prejudice. If we receive him in our schools, then doctors and lawyers don't only have to come from the suburbs and the private schools, but doctors and lawyers and teachers can come from the inner city and our public schools. When we receive him in our schools, teachers and administrators don't have to be afraid to walk to their cars after the bell rings because God would protect them. If we would receive him in our homes, abuse and neglect doesn't have to exist. If we receive him in our homes, sleep, we can sleep peacefully at night and not be worried about poverty, 
thank you for our children and our families and how to keep the lights on. If we would just receive him. And our government laws would be for the betterment of our citizens, not to grease the pockets of our politicians. If we receive him in our government, there would be fair and, 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 and equal justice for all. Why? Because the government sits on its shoulders. Uh, let me get ready to close right here. John chapter 1, verse 14. Thank you, sir. Yes, God. John chapter 1, 14 says, the word, I love this version, it's in the message translation. It says, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes. The one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Let me help you hear this, that in the person of Jesus Christ, who walked the earth and now gives us the power to become, he becomes flesh again by coming into our hearts. Yeah, back, 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 back in the Bible days, they were able to see flesh and blood Jesus, the word, the one who creates, the one who brings life, they were able to see him. But now he says that if you receive me, <laughs> I come and sit on the throne of your heart. That now when they see you, they see me. Because now flesh has become the word. <laughs> oh, I'm the only one not excited. I just got bit. <sighs> he is in you and he is in me. He walks our streets. He sits at our desks. He sits on the benches. He throws a football. He throws a baseball. He throws a, 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 a basketball. He sits in the state house and he sits in the White House. Why? Because those who receive him, you take Jesus everywhere you go. It's time that Jesus is presented so that man can see his glory for himself. You must be Jesus to someone who will never walk into a sanctuary. You've got to be Jesus for someone who doesn't even know that they need him in order to become who they're trying to be. You've got to show them who Jesus is by how you walk, how you talk, what you create, what you design, what you move, and who you talk to. You've got to show them who Jesus is. If the church would just present Jesus instead of our own opinion. Your opinion is nothing more than your insecurities giving them a face. See, I'm not going to touch certain parts of the world that I know I'm not strong in. Oh, I should have said that. Because see, we, we pick and choose what part of the word we want to present. We won't take the word that says that I'm more than a conqueror into our business opportunities. We won't take it into our hospitals because we're afraid he just might not do what I'm asking them to do. I can't be afraid to present Jesus because I may be the only Jesus that someone ever sees. Let me, let me finish my closing with this. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, Minister Steve Harvey introduced his Jesus. He gave an introduction of who he knew Jesus to be. But if you'll indulge me just for a moment, I want to give you an, introduce, an introduction on who I believe Jesus is to me. Ladies, and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you a man that took a little five-year-old boy in the junior choir and showed him that his life was not his own, but belonged to the God of all creation. This man came into my heart at five and walked with me until I openly confessed him as my personal savior at 11 to the congregation, although I already knew 
him before. See, he was so personal to me that when I would have nightmares that eventually were realized to be demonic attacks, all I had to do was sing the song, In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to me. As soon as I would get to that point, the demon would depart and I would have peaceful rest. I knew about Jesus way back then. Hallelujah. Uh, he was the one who showed me that just because I didn't have a father in my home, he would be a father to the fatherless. He's the kind of man that made sure my mother and I never went without. So much so that I thought I was just as rich as everybody else walking around me. I watched this man protect a single mom and bring her back into the kingdom to rear me and guide me in the way that I should go so that now that I'm old, I will not depart from it. This man proved that he was king of kings and lord of lords every day of my life. I didn't have to worry about my future because this man constantly reminded me and still does that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I have value. When I was ready to take my life because I didn't think I mattered, he came into my dorm room and said to me my work was not done. I watched him make ways out of no ways. I felt his presence when I thought all hope was lost. I've heard him tell me feed my sheep when I wasn't sure that I was worthy of the call. I watched him defy the doctor's diagnosis three times at the birth of my three presidents, Kennedy, Reagan, and Jackson. And now I've seen him take a congregation that could have scattered and went their own way. But he told that congregation that they now have the power to become whatever he designed for them to be. What I also know about this man and have seen his glory with my own eyes is that he is a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a confidant. He's a forgiver. He's a friend to the friendless. He gives hope to the hopeless. He's been Alpha and Omega. I've seen him be faithful and never seen the righteous forsaken. I've seen him love unconditionally. So with great mega pleasure, I introduce to some and reintroduce to others the greatest man that ever walked the earth. And now, ready to walk into our hearts so we can take him to the highways and the byways, to the masses and to our closest inner circle. He issues with the sun. Her body doesn't take well uh, to too much direct sunlight. And so we talked before uh, the, the service started and I told her, you know, uh, if you need to walk off, you know, you just go ahead and walk off. But she was doing what she believed God called her to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then she began to be attacked by the elements. Uh, and when I turned and I saw her in distress, I was telling her it's okay to go and sit down, but she responded to me, just let me get under your shadow. Yeah, yeah. And when she said that to me in that yeah. moment, it made me think about yes, the scripture yeah. in Psalm 91 that says, he who dwells in the secret place 
of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And when we get under the shadow of God, he protects us from the element. There's a, there's a sense of protection from the element that you can only get when you get under God's shadow. And just in that moment, God made real to me what his shadow does for us. Without his shadow, I'm exposed to the enemy. Without his shadow, if I try to move and do what it is that I want to do in life, I'm going to be subject to the, to the things in the air, to the fowls of the air. But when you get under the shadow of God, he will hide you in the secret place. And if you're listening today and you don't know Jesus, you can't say, here's Jesus, and you're not under his shadow, I invite you today to come up under the shadow of the Almighty. He is here for you. He is waiting for you. And when you allow him to come into your life, all the things that the pastor said, those things that will become real to you. I challenge you to think. Pastor talked about who Jesus was to him. But I challenge you to think about what he is to you and have you allowed him to be what it is that he's supposed to be in your life. Have you opened yourself up to him? Have you surrendered your heart? Have you been able to tell him yes? Yes to your will. Yes to your way. And if somebody out there cannot say yes to that, I want to invite you to come. We have one coming. Let's give God a hand. For this young man who's coming to heaven. Your life will never be the same. And I thank God because, you know, we're here. We do things in excellence here. And I know uh, our pastors and the musicians got a little, probably a little frustrated because things were not working out on time as they were supposed to. But even when we don't know, God knows. And so God knows when there needs to be a delay. And he knows when things need to move forward because things are done in his timing. And there's a soul, we might have been gone by now, had we been able to start when we attempted to start. But God knows who needs to hear and feel the love of Jesus through us. <coughs> Brother, we thank God for you. Your life won't be the same. So this young man is asking for prayer uh, for deliverance on today. And so we got believers out here, right? So we just want to stretch our hands and minister to this young man. And you'll see, I want you to pray where you are. Don't just sit and watch, but pray believing that God is going to give him whatever he needs. Even as they pray for him, we pray for him that the power of the Holy Ghost would come into his life and break and destroy every stronghold that would try to destroy him in the name of Jesus. We speak deliverance in his life right now. We speak deliverance to his spirit. We speak deliverance in his soul. We speak peace in his mind. We command the hand of the enemy to be loosed off of him. In the name of Jesus, we declare that every trap of the enemy, that every trap that Satan has prepared for him, will not prosper, but he will do what it is God has called him to do. He will be a light to the darkness that surrounds him. Yes, when he yes, enters yes, the room, yes. darkness is going to have to dissipate because of the light that's inside of him. In the name of Jesus. So God, we just speak an anointing in his life. God, we just ask you to anoint him for your work right now. In the name of Jesus. So God, we just ask you to set him free. In the name of Jesus, yes, the Lord yes, says, he yes, who the yes. sun sets free is oh, free indeed. Yes, and because of that, he does not have yes, to be bound. And so we declare freedom Hallelujah. over his life right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, God, we thank yes, you for this young man. We don't know his name, but you know his name. And you call him for a purpose. And you call him for a plan. And we declare that whatever that plan is shall not return to you void because your word cannot go back to you empty. And so, God, we thank you and we praise you because we know that the word that you've spoken over this life, yes, that you've Lord. spoken over this soul, will not return to you void, will not return to you empty, but it will be completed as you have ordained in his life, God. And we just ask that you would get the glory out of this life. Get the glory out of this life. 
get the glory yes, out of his yes, life. Yes, yes, yes. In the name of Jesus, and God, we thank you, and we praise you, and we thank you again, and we praise you again, because we know that you do all things well. Why don't you give God a hand if you believe that this young man will never be the same. God, yes, we Lord. praise you. We thank you for him in the name of Jesus. We do want to allow you, even as they continue to pray, uh, we do want to allow you to be a blessing uh, to our pastor, if you so choose. But we also want to invite you, uh, when the service ends, uh, to stick around and stop at our booths. We have some things prepared for you today. We have some food uh, for you to enjoy. Uh, we want to have fellowship after we have worship and words. So you are invited to stick around, get to know your brothers and sisters. If you are somebody who is uh, not a member of this church, if you want to be, we want to invite you to come. You are welcome here. Uh, it will be a great decision, one of the best decisions in your life to connect yourself to this body because we are truly raising up a people to be great in God. Mega! Yes. And we can guarantee that you will be better if you connect yourself. If God is compelling you to do so. Uh, even if you are not connecting yourself, get connected with believers just because. If you have a, another church home, that's okay. Be connected to the body of Christ. We are all the body of Christ. And so we encourage you to connect with us on today. Do we have anything else? We do. Praise the Lord. I just want to give you a little bit of direction, and Elder Brian is going to close this out militarily. We have hot dogs, popcorn, fruit, and pasta salad. That is food for everyone. Water and juice. But back here in the corner, we have a snow cone station. In order, the, the snow cones are $2 a piece. There's a table back there where Kennedy is. She's waving her hand now. You need to purchase a ticket for snow cones, and then the gentleman will help you. Sir, we thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Come on, let's give him a hand. So our snow cones are $2 a piece. Our food is free for everyone. Over here we have our um, back-to-school supply giveaway, so all of our children uh, young people, if you're if you're in the house around us and you hear us, come get some school supplies. You're going to need it. We invite you to come. That's free for everyone. And over here, um, Sister Katrina and Minister Gail have put together many games. So please avail yourselves. There's checkers, spades, uh, hopscotch, double dutch, uh, cornhole, all that stuff. Just enjoy yourselves. We are here together to fellowship. Meet somebody you don't know. I, I'm going to challenge everybody on this side to come over here and meet somebody on this side. And everybody on this side, come over here and meet somebody on this side that you didn't meet when they came over to meet you. Amen. So we have Brother Daniel this morning, uh, and we were just praying for Daniel. Daniel has shared that he wants to attend church here. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yay. Yeah. God bless you, Brother Daniel. You're making a good decision. We are welcome, and we love you. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, we, we need some gentlemen uh, at the conclusion of service. Make sure that you surround Daniel, get his information, uh, so that we can keep up with Daniel and, and make sure uh, that Daniel knows that he's welcome here and uh, get him involved in the kingdom. Let's celebrate God for Daniel on today. Hallelujah! We are getting ready to go. Uh, I want to invite you all to come out on Tuesday nights. Uh, come out to Tuesday night prayer. Uh, we need to pray corporately uh, to ask God to give us the, the wherewithal to complete uh, and fulfill the vision uh, that he has given this house. And so we want everybody to come out on Tuesdays uh, to prayer. And when you come out, 
bring your teenagers because there's a teen class that's happening. Uh, so we love to see you, but we like to see your teenagers too uh, because we are doing some wonderful things in the teen ministry and we want your teenagers to be a part. So if your child has anything with the, the, a teen behind the number, uh, bring them. We want to see your teenagers and we want to see you. We also have classes for our new members on Tuesdays at 6.30 and we are currently running our Power to Get Wealth class that Elder Lucian is facilitating. You are welcome and encouraged and uh, highly uh, implore. I beseech you, brother, get to church on Tuesday night uh, for prayer and class. Uh, let us uh, be dismissed. Thank you, Father. We just thank you today uh, for this day because we know that you made it and because you made it, we will be glad in it, God. We thank you for every person who can hear me on today, God. We thank you for each soul that is present, God. We thank you for this community and we take a moment to speak blessings and protection over this community, God. We just take a moment to call forth any souls in this community that are meant for your kingdom and we command them to come from the north, from the south, from the east and the west. We kaleo everything and every person and every soul that is supposed to be a part of the kingdom. We call them forth now in the name of Jesus, God. We speak protection over this community. We speak protection over the young people in this community as they walk up and down the streets, God. Cause your angels to protect them, God. We, we declare, God, there was a time where this community was labeled as the poorest in the region, God, but we speak prosperity in this community, God. We speak blessing in this community, God. We declare that every church that's in this area would not just be in this area, but that it would affect the area, God. The church would not just remain in the four wild walls, but it would spill out into the streets that you would cause revival to happen on Scranton Road, yes, God. Yes, send revival yes, yes. to West 25th. Send revival to Clark. Send revival to West 14th, God. We declare that this community will be a kingdom community. And oh God, we just ask that you would cause us to have a zeal to see the kingdom be manifested in this area. And God, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.